Hi, Kim 101 students. Uh, welcome back for week eight. This week, we're going to start to talk about the quantities in chemical reactions. So how much stuff is, uh, is in a particular amount of, of some compound or element. If you, if you weigh something out, uh, you might want to know how much, how many atoms are in that. Uh, so, in fact, counting atoms can be very difficult. They're so small, it's really impossible to count them out one by one to know how many there are. So, practically speaking, the way we know how many atoms or molecules or pieces are in, a, you know, a handful or a sample, however big, uh, of of some matter is is to weigh it, and then we're going to have ways of trans uh, of converting that weight into a number of molecules or atoms or whatever it is and that way that we're going to use it is by calculating what's known as the molar mass okay the molar mass uh, has two other names it's also sometimes called the formula mass for ionic compounds and remember ionic compounds you can recognize them because they will be formed from metal and non-metal atoms the molar mass is also sometimes called the molecular mass for covalent compounds. And remember, you can identify covalent compounds because they'll have uh, not non-metal atoms only, generally. Okay, so how do we how do we do this? How do we count by weighing? Uh, again, atoms are so small. How can you measure out a number of atoms? You can't you can't just get out of tweezers and count them one by one because atoms are too small for that. You would literally be spending a lifetime plus they're too small to be seen by your eye so uh we count atoms by weighing things uh the weight of a mole a mole of atoms and this m idea of a mole is something we're about to develop here is different for for every element uh, for but it will have the same count a mole just means a certain number of things they could be atoms it could be anything but usually they refer to very small things because a mole is a very big number. A mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of those things. So <clears throat> we usually use this number to count very small things because uh, if we have a handful of, you know, some stuff, it's going to have about this many atoms, you know, more or less. Uh, so this is a very convenient way of counting how many atoms or molecules or, or other very small pieces that we're counting. Uh, for example, a mole is the number of atoms that, that weighs a certain number of weight in grams. So a, a mole of neon weighs 20.18 20 grams. Now, this actually comes from the periodic table. So I'm going to take out the uh, periodic table here. And let's take a look at it. So if we look at neon right here, it says it, it has a number underneath, which was the average atomic mass, 20.18. Now, before we had defined this as the average of the masses of one atom in terms of atomic mass units. Well, the way this is set up is that this is also the mass of one mole of these atoms, which is actually a quantity that's much more useful to us. Atomic mass units are really, really small, they're like about the mass of one proton or neutron, but grams, that is something we can actually measure, measure out on a balance. So the way these numbers have been set up, it is set up such that if you have one mole of neon ion, of atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of those atoms, those will weigh 20.18 grams on, uh, altogether. Okay, so that, that actually makes uh, this number that we see on the periodic table very useful for us in terms of relating the number of grams of a substance to how many atoms are in that substance. <clears throat> and so a mole of neon atoms, or this many neon atoms, will weigh 20.18 grams. And that is true for all these elements that are listed on the periodic table. That number underneath tells us the weight in grams of one mole of these atoms. When atoms combine to make compounds, you have to add up the masses of all the atoms within that compound to get the, the mass of one mole of the compound. <clears throat> so let's let, take a look for a compound we're all very familiar with, water, H2O. So if we talk about one water molecule, it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. But if we talk about a mole of water molecules, that will have two moles 
of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. So that's a very useful relationship to us. And that's kind of a kind of relationship we're going to want to keep in our mind for every compound. So for a compound like this, yes, if we have one water, that does equal two hydrogen atoms, which I'll just write as an H. Or if I have one water molecule, that means I have one oxygen atom. That is true. There's one oxygen atom in there. But what's going to be a very useful relationship to us soon, in addition to these, is going to be if we have one mole of water molecules. This means we have two moles of hydrogen atoms. That will be very, very handy to us. Or if we have one mole of hydrogen atoms, we could all, or water molecules rather, we can also say that we have one mole of oxygen atoms. And these two ways of expressing that relationship within the formula are going to end up being quite useful to us. Uh, so we just scaled this up to a mole. It's like, <clears throat> and a mole is a very big number of things, but it works the same way as just scaling up a recipe to, you know, a dozen. So we have a dozen water molecules, we have tw 24 hydrogens or two dozen hydrogens. If we have a dozen water molecules, we have a dozen oxygens or 12 oxygens. Uh, so likewise, sim in a similar way of speaking, we can, we can uh, scale up to a mole. And being able to produce these relationships will be very useful for, for you. Also useful will be the relationship between a mole of water molecules and how many grams that weighs. And that's what we're going to calculate right now. So if we have one mole of water molecules, that contains two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. So we have two moles of hydrogen atoms. And if we look on the periodic table, let's go to the periodic table. We go to the There we go. If we go to the periodic table, we'll see that hydrogen has 1.008 underneath. Now, a note about these numbers. You can see a lot of them have a lot of digits on them. Uh, it is up to you to choose how many of these you want to use, but you want to use at least enough so that you, you cover your initial data. So let's say our initial data has three sig figs. So then I'm okay with, uh, with rounding my hydrogen mass so that it has three sig figs here. Uh, so that would be uh, 1.01 if I round it to three sig figs. And that's what I'm going to do. 1.01. Okay. All right. So 1.01 grams for a mole. We got two moles of hydrogen atoms. Each mole weighs 1.01 grams. So our two moles of hydrogen atoms altogether weigh 2.02 grams. Then in addition, in our one mole of water molecules, we also have one mole of oxygen atoms. So let's see how much a mole of oxygen atoms weighs. If we go back to the periodic table, we see a mole of oxygen atoms weighs 15.999 grams right here. We, again, it's probably useful to just round this. We can round this to two after the decimal like we did for the hydrogen. So we're just going to round this to 16.00. And so one mole of oxygen atoms is 16.00 grams. So we've got 2.02 .02 grams from the two moles of oxygen and 16 grams for the, or sorry, 2.02 .02 grams for the, for the two moles of hydrogen and 16.00 grams for the one mole of oxygen. So if we add all of the mass of all these atoms together, we get the mass for one mole of water molecules. And so that is 18.02 grams. So a mole of water molecules is, if you were to have a, like a, a handful of water like this, uh, you'd probably have around 18 grams of water. Uh, like I said, a mole number of atoms or molecules, the reason why we use that, that amount is because that's about you know a handful. It's a reasonable quantity of, of stuff that we might be working with in, in our experiments. And so uh, the mass of, of one mole of water is 18 grams. So uh, another way to say this is if we have 18.02 grams of H2O, that is equal to having one mole of H2O molecules. And that's the way we could write that.
And so that's what we've figured out. We've figured out now a relationship between the grams of water, the grams of water here, and the moles of water molecules. Uh, and so now we can weigh out a certain grams of water and be able to figure out how many moles of water molecules that is, which is going to be very handy for doing chemical calculations. So a mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of H2O, and that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 water molecules. Huge number of molecules, not a huge number of grams, right? A very reasonable number of grams. Yeah. So this is going to be a useful relationship for us. It's going to be a conversion factor that helps us con to convert between grams of water and moles of water. So let's use this. So we just figured out in the last slide that one mole of water is 18.02 grams of water. What can we do with this? Well, we could ask a question. How many moles of water molecules are there in 120.0 grams of water? This boils down to a conversion problem. So I taught you conversions early on in the class, and conversions are, continue, are going to continue to be important throughout the class. Remember the name of the game in conversions. Every day we're canceling, canceling. We need to cancel. So here we've got a conversion factor. This is definitely a conversion factor right here because it has an equals in it. So that means we're not going to start with the conversion factor. We always start with the data in a conversion. And so our data is right here, 120 grams of water. Number, unit, right? Number right here, number, unit. That's data. So we always start with the data. So first thing we're going to do is write the 120 grams of water. So we write it right here. 120 grams of water. Then we know because we're doing conversions, we're going to apply a conversion factor. So I've put my fraction part here. And I know what unit has to go down here. You know it too, right? What ha unit has to go here? The same one that's right here so that they will cancel. So then I go back to my conversion factor and I see what number goes along with grams of H2O. It's 18.02, 18.02 grams of H2O. So that's what I'm gonna write down here. And now my grams of H2O are going to cancel. For the other side of the fraction, I need to put one mole of H2O on the top. So that's what I'm gonna put right here on the top. Here it comes, one mole of H2O. All right. Now we've got the moles of H2O, so we're done, right? This is it. This is what we were trying to find, moles of H2O. We've got it. So all we have to do is break out our calculator and do this. So let's do it. We break out our calculator here. We get 120.0, but your, your calculator doesn't know about sig figs, OK? Divide by 18.02. And notice that our molar mass that we calculated has four sig figs. So is our data. So we're perfectly fine. We didn't need to pull more sig figs off the periodic table. We had enough. And so now uh, we equals, OK. Our calculator spits this out. But our calculator doesn't know what sig figs are. So we're going to have to round this. We're going to round it so it has four sig figs. Since this is a two, we round down, so it will be 6.659, and the units will be moles of H2O. And so there we have it. All right, great. Okay, so uh, that's how we can convert between grams of water and moles of water. But there are other questions that could be asked, like, how many water molecules is this? And so this is where you've got to know a conversion factor that's going to take you between moles of water and how many that is. Well, this one, it wasn't written, but you should know it because it's just the definition of a mole. A mole of anything is going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of those things. So in this case, we're talking about water molecules. So a mole of water molecules is that many water molecules.
Okay, so that's the conversion factor we're going to use. This is going to be going to be able to take us between moles of water molecules and how many water molecules that is. So we're going to start with our data that we got. We have how many moles. We can use that to get to how many water molecules. So we're going to copy this down right down here. And then we're going to do the same thing we're used to. We're converting it from moles of water to how many water molecules that is. So we're going to apply a conversion factor, this one right here. And we're going to put down at the bottom the same unit that's right here. It's got to be the same so that it cancels. So we put moles of water here. Okay. Uh, and the, the number that's going to go with that is one, one mole of water. And then we're going to convert that to how many water molecules. One mole of water is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 water molecules. So now we can calculate our moles of water are going to cancel. And let's calculate here. We have 6.659 times 6.022. Remember to use your EE or EXP. And then 23. Don't type times 10 to the power. Remember that. This already takes care of it. So we get this big long number. Chances are your calculator is going to give you this big huge number in scientific notation. So we want to write it with four sig figs. So we're going to go right here 4.010 and then times 10 to the 24 water molecules. Now notice here I put the, the molecules in parentheses. There's a reason for this. If you write the chemical formula for a molecule, because I know chemistry and you know chemistry, we're both going to know you're talking about a molecule. Okay? So you don't have to write the word molecule. It's implied by you writing the formula for a molecule. But yes, we are talking about how many water molecules. Same thing here. I'm talking about how many water molecules. So instead of writing out the word molecule, I just wrote out the formula for H2O. Just saves me some space, okay? Uh, and so that's very common. If you write the formula for a molecule, I know you're talking about a molecule. So do you. We all do. Uh, if you write the symbol for an element, we know you're talking about atoms for the element. Okay. Now what about if we have a ionic compound and this ionic compound contains polyatomic ions in it so what if we need to calculate the molar mass of that well uh, that means we're gonna have to figure out what is in there and so this is where it can help sometimes to you know separate this out into the units that are making it up it's a calcium 2 plus ion and then we got two chloride ions ClO2 those are minus one the charges aren't so important as our counting out the atoms. So we had two of these chloride ions, so I've written two here. And so this means one calcium chloride contains a calcium ion, two, two chlorine atoms, four oxygen atoms, two here and two here. So that means one mole of calcium chloride contains one mole of calcium, two moles of chlorine, and four moles of oxygen okay the two here and the two here so if you still need to write these out like this to count everything up totally okay all right uh, the way that you get the number is just like two times one for chlorine is two or two times two for oxygen which is four and then there's just one calcium and we scaled this up to a mole because we want to talk about a realistic quantity of these right we scaled the one up to a mole. We could say one calcium atom, or we could say a mole of calcium atom. We could say two chlorine atoms or two moles of chlorine atoms, and so forth. So now what we need to do is add up the molar masses for all the atoms that are contained in, within this. So we first look for calcium. We got one mole of calcium, and we need to know how much a mole of calcium weighs. So we go to the periodic table, and we see that for calcium, it is 40.078. I'm rounding to 2 after the decimal, so I rounded it to 40.08. Okay, one mole of calcium atoms weighs 40.08 grams. So one mole of calcium, 40.08 grams per mole. So we got 40.08 grams of calcium atoms. 
now we've got two moles of chlorine atoms and <coughs> All right. <coughs> oh, sorry about that okay so two moles of chlorine atoms and let's see how much each mole of chlorine atoms weighs it is 35.45 grams so we got two moles of chlorine atoms each one weighs 35.45 grams so altogether we have 70.9 grams of chlorine atoms and we've got four moles of oxygen atoms four moles of oxygen atoms each weighs 16 grams I've just rounded this to four sig figs right here that's 16 16 grams okay so 4 times 16, that's 64 grams. And then to get the total mass of 1 mole of calcium chloride, I have to add all of these up. So it's 40.08 plus 70.9 plus 64. And that is 174.98. And so the molar mass is 174.98 grams. That means if I have one mole of calcium chloride, I have, uh, have 174.98 grams of calcium chloride. One note is that ionic compounds, remember, these do not have molecules, okay? So, uh, we we you know write down the lowest ratio of these ions uh, and this is called a formula unit for ionic compounds instead of a molecule so the formula unit is the ionic compound version of the word molecule and so sometimes the, your book or, or someone else will call the molar mass for an ionic compound they'll also call it the formula mass these mean the same thing so now we've got the molar mass of calcium chloride. And notice the, the strategy we've been using here again. Uh, we've been using also the relationship between how many atoms are in one molecule. And we're about to use that uh, in particular here. So I wanted to highlight it. So we can make a conversion factor from a spider. <clears throat> one spider has eight legs. So we could say eight legs per spider. Or um, if we're talking about a chair, one chair has four legs, so the relationship is four legs is one chair, or one chair is four legs. And for water molecules, let, for example, one water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms. So we could say two hydrogen atoms, one water molecule. Or we could also say one oxygen atom <coughs> for one water molecule. Or we could also say, and this is important, two moles of hydrogen atoms for one mole of water. Or we could say one mole of oxygen atoms for one mole of water. The one you're, and so these all come from the formula itself. So the way you choose it, choose which one is you would want to use is by choosing which one you need. You need to, to relate the moles of hydrogen atoms to the moles of water molecules they're in, or do you need to relate the number of hydrogen atoms to the number of water molecules, or the number of oxygen atoms to the number of water molecules? But this formula, H2O, implies all of these things. <clears throat> Here's another example. One mole of uh, carbon tetrachloride equals four moles of chlorine atoms that are in it so this relationship is inherent in the chemical formula so we can convert between the number of atoms in a molecule to how many of those molecules or the number of moles of atoms or moles of molecules to the number of moles of atoms in those molecules very useful to us here and we're going to use that in the next example as well it will also be used on your um, <clears throat> on your experiment for this week as well <clears throat> 
So now we're going to do a mole example with an ionic compound, calcium chloride. We've already calculated the molar mass of this. It was 174.98 grams for one mole. So let's say you're given this question. How many moles of oxygen atoms are there in 2.3 moles of calcium chloride? So the hardest part of any of these problems is deciding what conversion factor am I supposed to use here? So what I'm trying to relate is the moles of oxygen atoms to the moles of calcium chloride. So what I need to do is I need to look within the calcium chloride. And again, I could write out the calcium chloride if that helps me count the atoms. So what I see in here is if I have one calcium chloride, I have four oxygen atoms in it. Not 40 atoms, but four O oxygen atoms, okay? Likewise, but here I'm asked for relationship of moles. So likewise, if I have one mole of calcium chloride, <clears throat> I have four moles of oxygen atoms. And because I'm trying to relate moles to moles, this is the one that I'm going to want to use here. So I'm going to start by writing my moles of calcium chloride. That's my data, number, unit. So I start with my data, moles of calcium chloride. I'm going to make a conversion factor. This is the conversion factor I'm going to use. And I know what unit I have to put down here. It has to be the same one as this one. So I put down my, my unit and it is, the number with it is one mole. It's right here. I put that right down here. So now my moles of calcium chloride cancel. Now I'm going to put the other side, four moles of oxygen atoms, four moles of oxygen atoms. That goes right there. So now my moles of calcium chloride have canceled and I have moles of oxygen atoms, and that's what I was asked to get. And so I'm done now, I just gotta multiply 2.3 times four, and I get 9.2 moles of oxygen atoms. Okay, 9.2 moles of oxygen atoms. Okay, <clears throat> so I was able to answer that question. Let's look at another question that's related. What is the mass of 8.22 8, 8 times 10 to the 22nd formula, formula units of calcium chloride? Now this one is more difficult because I don't have a direct relationship between the number of formula units and the number and the mass of, of the compound. But what I do have is if I had the moles, so here I have the, the number of calcium chlorides, formula units. So I'm just going to call these calcium chlorides. Now what I can do is I can go from my number of calcium chlorides to my moles of calcium chloride if I use the definition of what a mole is. <clears throat> then I can go from moles of calcium chloride to how many grams of calcium chloride and for that, I'm going to use the molar mass. <clears throat> so my relationships are here is going to be uh, one mole of calcium chloride is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 calcium chlorides. And my relationship here is going to be this right here. One mole of calcium chloride is 174.98 grams of the calcium chloride. I'm kind of running out of space there, but. So those are the relationships I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna to have to do two steps here. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with my formula units of calcium chloride. So again, instead of writing the word molecule or atom or formula units, you don't have to if you want to save some space. If I write the formula for an ionic compound, I know I'm talking about how many of those formula units I've got. So this is a perfectly fine way to write how many formula units.
8.2 times 10 to the 22 calcium chloride cal chlorides. Okay, so now I want a relationship that's going to take me from how many calcium chlorides to how many moles of calcium chloride. And that is that one mole of calcium chloride is this many. Because remember, the word mole, the word mole means this number. They mean exactly the same thing. And I only used three sig figs here on this because I only had two here. So I didn't put the extra two, that's fine. Uh, you can use 6.02 too, uh, as long as, you know, 6.02 as long as uh, you have enough sig figs. Here's three, that's plenty to cover my two over here. So now what's gonna happen is I'm canceling how many calcium chlorides I've got. So those cancel. And now I've got how many moles of calcium chloride. So the next step is, again, I got one more conversion factor because I'm asked for what is the mass, and the mass is in grams, okay? So I don't have grams of calcium chloride yet. So I've got one extra step. I need to cancel moles of calcium chloride and get grams, and that's where I use the molar mass to go between moles and grams. So my moles of calcium chloride are gonna cancel, and I have the number one that goes next to that, one mole of calcium chloride, and that is the same as 174.98 grams of calcium chloride. And now I have the grams of calcium chloride, and so now I am ready to write my answer. My answer is gonna be in grams of calcium chloride. And so now I have to punch this into my calculator, 8.2, make sure to use your EE. If you don't use your EE, your numbers are gonna come out weird, okay? EE 22, especially right here, you have to use it, okay? 6.02 EE 23, and then times, since this is on the top, times 174.98 equals, and I get uh, 23.83, uh, so with, with two sig figs, I'll round the 23 up, it'll be 24. 24, uh, 23.8 grams of calcium chloride, but I need to round up again, so I get 24 grams of calcium chloride. <clears throat> and that is, that is the answer for that one. So this is the way in which we do chemistry calculations to count atoms within compounds also to determine the mass of the, the compound or to convert from mass to the compound to how many atoms there are. And so this is how we do calculations of how many things they are, there are in chemistry and how much they weigh. So you might have noticed in the last example, I started with the number of particles, but I couldn't go directly to the mass of the substance. There was something in between. The moles are always in the middle. We'll also later be able to determine the volume of the gas, but we'll come back to this later. Uh, what's, so what's important to remember is that moles is in the middle. So I used to have a teacher I used to teach for, he used to always say, he's a real old guy, he'd be like, go for the moles. And he'd say it all the time. And I say, go for the moles. So the moles is in the middle. When in doubt, go for the moles. Uh, you can't go directly between mass and how many. You have to go through moles. To go between the mass and how many moles, you use the molar mass that you calculate using the periodic table. To go between the number of particles and how many moles, you use Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Uh, so remember what you can kind of refer to this. Remember, you just can't go directly between these. To go between mass and moles, you gotta use the molar mass. To go between how many and how many moles, you gotta use 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Finally, uh, it can be useful to know out of a compound how much of that mass is due to a certain particular element. So percent mass is the mass of the atoms of a particular compound divided by the mass of the whole compound. So for example, if we have 0.358 grams of chromium that reacts with oxygen 
and then we get a chromium oxide compound that is 0.523. So in that case, out of the 0.523 grams, 0.358 grams were from the chromium atoms, and the rest was from the oxygen. So if we're figuring out the mass percent of this, of this metal oxide, this chromium oxide of chromium, it would be the mass of the chromium divided by the mass of the whole oxide times 100%. So the mass of the chromium was 0.358 grams. The mass of the chromium oxide was 0.523 grams. And this is true in general. Remember, I've taught you this before. Any percentage is the part that we're interested in over the whole. And that gives you a, a decimal. And then to turn that into a percentage, you multiply by 100%, which makes it into a percentage. So here, the part we're interested in is the chromium. And the whole thing is the chromium and the oxygen together. So when we plug this into our calculator, we get 0 0.358 divided by 0 0.523. And then that gives us decimal 0 0.684 so we multiply times 100 percent to make it a percent so to three sig figs 68.5 percent now what the reason why we might be interested in having a mass percent is because it could tell us out of a compound that we're interested in what is the mass of a particular atom within that compound for example, sodium chloride, which is table salt, is 39% sodium. So what we can say, a, a way of describing this in a conversion factor is that percent means per 100. So that means per 100 grams of sodium chloride, 39 of those grams are sodium. Okay, And so this, this makes a very useful conversion factor for us. Uh, we can write it in two ways. We can write it as... 39 grams of sodium per 100 grams of sodium chloride, or we can flip that like any conversion factor and write 100 grams of sodium chloride per 39 grams of sodium. Just depends on, on what we're using it for. So a, a great example of where this might be useful in a nutrition context is that the FDA recommends that adults consume less than 2.4 grams of sodium per day. Uh, but that sodium is usually in the form of salt, sodium chloride. So how many grams of sodium chloride or straight salt could someone consume and stay within the FDA guidelines, okay? Uh, and so uh, it's 2.4 grams of sodium, okay? And we're going to use a conversion factor, 39 grams of sodium per 100 grams of sodium chloride. Uh, so we're going to go from grams of sodium to grams of sodium chloride. Okay, and so we're going to start with our 2.5 gram, 2.4 grams of sodium. So 2.4 grams of sodium, and we're going to use this form of the conversion factor because that puts grams of sodium on the bottom. So our grams of sodium will cancel, and we're going to end up with grams of sodium chloride. Now, if we punch this in our calculator, we have 2.4 grams of sodium times 100 divide by 39. And that gives us 6.2 to 2 sig figs. So what this says is that in order to stay within the FAA guidelines of 2.4 grams of sodium atoms, we could eat at most 6.2 grams of sodium chloride. Because it's not the chloride that's particularly important, it's the sodium. So no more than 6.2 grams of salt. Uh, and so uh, that's a, a way in which the percentage uh, by mass might be useful for converting between the, the mass of, in this case, sodium to the sodium chloride that contains it or the mass of a particular element contained within a compound. And so that's, uh, that's it for our intro here of uh, how of the mole and also the molar mass. And what we're going to use this for in the next lecture is to determine uh, basically how much uh, of a product we can get from reactants reacting in a chemical reaction. And that process is going to be stoichiom called stoichiometry. So that's what's up next, and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.